Hello friends, so today we're going to be drawing your landscapes and you can see here I have my drawing paper ready. Before we get started drawing, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we just discussed. We talked about our foreground, our middle ground, and our background and the horizon line of our artwork. So foreground means it's in the front. They both start with S. And the foreground of your artwork are the things or the objects that are closest to you. So in this landscape, this boat would be closest to us. That's why it is towards us or closer to us. Now, in your middle ground, that's where your trees are going to be in your landscape today. That's going to be about the middle of your paper. And you can see I have middle ground here pointing to my trees, all different types of trees. Usually around your middle ground is your horizon line. And we're going to make that in just a second on our paper. But your horizon line is the line that goes straight across your paper, and that's usually the line that is horizontal. So you can see I wrote that word here. That's where the word horizon line comes from, is the word horizontal, and that means a line that goes straight across. And the last thing we can talk about is your background, and your background is all those other designs or objects that are all the way farthest in your picture. So in this case, that would be our mountains. So now that we know all of those art terms, I'm gonna show you how to draw your landscape. So you're gonna draw with me today. So make sure you are really focusing and listening. I'll leave that right there for us. The first thing we're gonna do, I have given you your drawing paper. You should have a pencil, and if you need to, you should have an eraser. I want you to first make sure that your name is on the back of your paper. So I've already written my name on the back of my paper. Now, your first step is we're going to make your horizon line. And like I said, that's in the middle of your paper. So instead of trying to draw a straight line across, what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper, we're going to line up our corners, and we're going to fold it in half. That's going to make our horizon line. So what I do when I fold my corners I look to make sure they're lined up. I'm going to give it a little pinch in the middle, and then I can slide my finger to one side, pinch it, slide my finger to the other side, and there we go. So now my paper has been folded in half. We're going to unfold it though, and we're going to actually draw that horizon line. After you have folded it, you can see I have this straight line here. So I am going to turn my paper take my pencil and I'm just gonna try my best to follow that fold it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line there we go so this is my horizon line I hope that you are working along with me and following with me so I won't have to explain my directions again so now I have my horizon line. Once I've made my horizon line, I can start working on my middle ground. So you can see in my picture here, my sketch, I have one, two, three, four, five, six trees. I want you to have at least five. And as you can see here, I made my trees a little different. I have some regular pine trees. I made with some squiggly or zigzag lines. I have a regular, almost like a maple tree that I drew in my picture. Or you can also draw pine trees with a trunk on the bottom. What I usually do is I usually draw pine trees that don't have a trunk because they're far away. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm just going to make little squiggles down. And I'm going to go ahead and draw five trees. Whatever way you want to draw them. Make sure you're using different sizes. That's for some variation. That's a principle of art. That makes your art more exciting. If it's all the same, it's usually not that exciting. So, I have drawn my five trees. And you can see mine are all the same design, but they're all different sizes. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some are really big. So it's up to you on how you want to design your middle ground today. Once we have drawn our middle ground, now we're going to go ahead and work on our background. And remember, you're drawing with me today, so make sure you're really listening. You have two options for your mountains. You can make your mountains curved, like mine, or you might want to make your mountains like a triangle. 
So I am going to show you both ways. I can start at my paper. I'm not going to start all the way on the bottom of the horizon line. I am going to start actually in the middle of my paper. And the first one I'm going to make is a curved mountain. So like a big rainbow, we'll go all the way up. And I'm going to make this one come all the way down. You can see in some of my other mountains, some of them are intersecting are going behind each other. That makes your artwork more exciting. If I were to make them all right next to each other, that wouldn't be very exciting. You wanna show the layers, which means some are closer to you and some are farther away. So I've drawn one mountain and here's how you can draw another mountain. So I might go ahead and draw maybe another mountain here. I'm gonna layer it with actually a pointy one and I'm gonna make this one really tall I'll make that go to my tree. I think I'll make a smaller mountain that is in a triangle there. Maybe another curved one. And I think I'll do a smaller triangle mountain in the background. So you can see my mountains look like some are in front of each other and the others are behind. So make sure you are drawing your mountains. Now again, I hope you're drawing along with me because this is the next step you can do. You can draw whatever you would like in your foreground. Like I said before, we are gonna have almost like a lake in front of your landscape. So if you want to draw a boat, you can do that. If you wanna make your landscape have some details other than a boat in the water, maybe you're gonna draw a monster in your water, or maybe you'll just add some lines like me for some waves. That's gonna be up to you. I'll let you decide what you want to add. So once you have drawn your entire landscape, the last thing you will do before we start painting is outline it with a Sharpie. And I am only going to draw over my pencil lines. Again, if you make a mistake and you don't follow them exactly like I don't sometimes, that's okay because there's always room to grow. And when we start painting, you won't be able to see your pencil lines anymore. So once you are done, you will outline your entire artwork in Sharpie. Alrighty friends, I'm gonna finish mine up and I'm gonna let you keep creating. All right friends, here is your last step. So I'm gonna give you a paint folder and we're just going to paint the bottom of our lake because when we do our painting next week, we will actually be printing our trees onto our lake like a reflection, almost like when you see yourself in the mirror. So today we want to make sure we have our lake painted so the next week we can focus on all of our other details and you can focus on mixing your colors. I am gonna give you a paintbrush like mine here and some blue liquid watercolor. And the only thing I need you to do is carefully open your watercolor. It's okay if your fingers get messy. Dip in your brush and you're just painting the bottom. I am not gonna paint my sky. I'm not gonna paint my trees. I'm just painting the bottom. And I am dipping my brush in a lot. If I get too much watercolor, like usual, just wipe your brush on the side of the cup and keep going. Your paint is going to soak in or absorb into your paper very quickly. So this is gonna be your last step for today. If you are like me and you accidentally get a little above your horizon line, that is okay. Next week we will use regular tempera paint, which will be thicker and a lot more fun to mix. Once you are done, friends, you may go ahead and walk it to the drying rack. Awesome job today and happy creating.